everyone! Welcome to the Jada and Stitches show and welcome back to the craft room! Recently we went to Lens Mill which is a bit of a discount craft supply store. There's a series of them in Ontario, around 12 or 13 locations I think. And yes, they do ship to the US. That was the number one biggest question we got <laughs> on our actual haul video that we did a little while ago. Uh, we'll link that in the description box down below if you missed that video. That video concentrates mainly on the yarn we picked up. But we did mention we got some hooks and we also said that we were going to unbox them in its own video because I felt like they deserved a little more spotlight. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to talk about the hooks we got. So the first thing we did was get two new crow hooks or double-ended crochet hooks. I'm going to go through these one by one. Uh, they're both Susan Bates and they're uh, two different sizes. They're also two different colors. So double-ended means that they, the hook on either end is the same size hook, unlike some crochet hooks that have hooks on either end but they're different sizes, which kind of gives you two different size choices in the same hook. This is the same size throughout. And you can use crow hooks for double-ended Tunisian work, uh, working with two different colors, um, or even Tunisian crochet in the round, which is something that I really hope to get into a little bit in the future um, because I haven't really tried it yet, but I've seen it done <laughs> and I'm eager to give it a whirl. Uh, so this first one we got is a size 4 millimeter, also known as a G or a 6. Sometimes G or 6s are also 4.25 millimeter, depends on the manufacturer, but Susan Bates 4.00 is a G6. And um, it is 25 centimeters long or 10 inches, and it's a really pretty pink color. We paid $3 Canadian for this, which is $2.40 approximately US. So I'm just going to get right into it here. They've got some perfor perfor per 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 perforated. <laughs> Perforated cardboard on the back. Ha, there we go. Oh, that's nice. And so the whole thing just sort of like folds down. I don't need scissors to get into this. Oh, and out it comes. <sighs> there is nothing like slipping a new hook out of its wrapping. Hmm. Oh, that's nice. So Susan Bates does not make inline hooks. Her hooks have um, sort of a, a bit of a contoured or an actual point to them at the end. Um, inlines mean that the back is straight in alignment with the hook and Susan Bates they curve a little bit. So I think sometimes depending on the hooks you start with you kind of end up gravitating towards whether you like the inline or the tapered hook more. I have a whole bunch of different kinds in my collection so it doesn't really like I can use them both. I think I tend towards inline hooks more often but I can certainly use the tapered hook and sometimes depending on the fiber I'm using I prefer a tapered hook just because that tapered point can get into the stitch a little bit better and you're not as likely to split the yarn at least I find that again that might have something to do with the way you hold your yarn or your should say your hook like your grip um, but I'm glad they make all these different kinds of hook shapes anyway that is a lovely size I'm just gonna sort of try and hold it up there as best um, I noticed too that the hook, one hook goes one direction and then on the other side it goes in the opposite direction. And I'm going to guess that that probably has something to do with your, I guess maybe keeping the loops on or, the, or maybe having more control over more loops on your hook. I'm not sure. Um, the other crow hooks I have are hooked in the same direction. So this one's hooked in different directions. Anyway, lovely smooth feel. I love that very light, dusty, rose pink color that it is. Um, I think a 4.6 4 millimeter or 4.25 millimeter, so the G6 hook, has been my favorite size for a long time. I think it's kind of like the sweet spot for a lot of medium and lightweight um, thread or like yarns, which is like, you know, your DKs, um, your worsted weight. Um, I think that might be like a, an eight ply in the ply system. So I like the 4.0 for that. Also, it's a nice, I think it's sort of my preferred size for making amigurumi too. Um, so I had to pick up a 4. Love the feel of that. There are no visible seams. It's completely smooth throughout. Susan Bates, what can I say? Gotta love it. All right, so that was number one. Let's try hook number two. Also Susan Bates, also 25 centimeters or 10 inches long. This one is a five millimeter or an H or an eight. Again, with a little perforated back, which isn't that difficult to get into, especially if you rock it back and forth a little bit. 
Um, ah, there we go, it just pops right out. <laughs> ah, and this one is a lovely light blue steel kind of color. Um, it's again got the hooks going one way and then the other. Smooth, tapered hook, no seams. Ah, nice light aluminum. Both of these have a nice light feel. Oh my gosh. I just, I don't know, something about the size and the weight of a four millimeter hook that I love. Five's a great size too. Um, that's another one that I like to use for medium weights and even chunky weight yarn or like the Aran weight yarn, especially if I'm making little things like amigurumi because it just kind of helps keep the stitches a little tighter. Um, and I wanted, I have slightly larger crow hooks so that the two hooks that I've got that are double ended already in my collection are five and a half millimeter and six and a half millimeter. So I wanted a couple of smaller ones because I want to try some Tunisian crochet using lighter weight yarns, possibly even some crochet thread. I haven't done that yet. So that was kind of what was in the back of my head when I saw these and picked them up. Um, and I, and I'm, I'm, I'm glad I did. Also love colors. <laughs> I love it when my hooks are different colors. And um, I needed to add a couple more double ended, slightly shorter hooks to my collection. So haven't tried them out yet, but I love Susan Bates. I'm a big fan and these just feel and look so nice. Anyway, so those are my two new Susan Bates double-ended crochet hooks. Marvelous. Okay, oh, and I should tell you, uh, $6 for the larger of the two hooks, Canadian, which is about $4.80 American. So altogether, $7.20 for the two hooks American or $9 Canadian for the two hooks. Um, so I don't know why there was a $3 difference between the four millimeter and the five millimeter. I think that's a bit curious. Could have something to do with supply, but um, that was the price difference between them. Anyway, this is the set that I'm super excited about getting into. It is a Knit Picks Rainbow Wood set. I have a Knit Picks Rainbow Wood size seven millimeter hook. That's the only rainbow wood hook I have in my collection so far. But I do have the um, Knitter's Pride rainbow wood uh, yarn winder and I love matching sets of things. <laughs> so when I saw this set at the uh, lens mill, I had to get it. A little, a little splash out, a little treat. Uh, we paid $60.39 Canadian and that is about $48.31 American. Excuse me. <clears throat> Always have a cup of coffee nearby. <laughs> and another nice thing, so there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight hooks in this set. They range from size E4 or a three and a half millimeter all the way up to a K or 10.5, which is a six and a half millimeter. So nice size spread. Of course, I have the seven millimeter already in my set or in my collection. So these are all the smaller ones. And they also come with their own little, their own little package. Here I am yap, yap, yapping. I'm not showing it to you, sorry. <laughs> so excited about these. Um, I I just love the packaging on these things and I just want to say too that Knit Picks is by H.A. Kid. Uh, not a sponsored video but I do wind up getting a lot of H.A. Kid tools in my collection and I tend to love them. Everybody asks about my wool needles, the, the, the loop-eyed needle that I use in almost every single one of our tutorials. Those are called wool needles. The set I have is by H.A. Kid. I've said this multiple times. Um, I bought them in a department store craft section like probably 25 or 30 years ago at this point and I only recently broke the loop on the small one. So <laughs> that's how well they've managed to hold up to all of the crocheting that I've been doing. Um, and I just find every, I, I tend to, I tend to pick up stuff that's by H.A. Kid. I don't know whether that's because it's what's available in the area or if I just naturally gravitate to it because it's a good product. I'm not sure, but I have high praise for that uh, manufacturer. This is one of those easy to get into uh, packages. You just sort of peel up that bottom thing which is nice because then your package still looks nice and tidy when it's all finished. <laughs> and this is the set. A plastic see-through case. It's got all of the sizes sort of laid out in front of it as a little cardboard insert, which I will definitely leave because the hooks themselves don't have sizing engraved on them. That's my only very small complaint about the Rainbow Wood Knit Pick hooks. 
Oh, that sounded good. Let's hear that again. Woo! <laughs> um, so yeah, the only thing I don't really like is that they don't bother to engrave the size on the hook, and the original 7mm that I picked up was in a little individually wrapped thing, and it didn't come, like this one obviously, the, the little insert is helpful, because you'll if you always put your hook back in the right pocket, you'll know what size it is. We also have a video on how to size crochet hooks and needles that don't have sizing written or engraved on them, or maybe it's rubbed off, and we'll link that in the description box down below too. It's a really easy, quick way to size your hooks so you, you have a very good idea what size hook it is, so you don't have to throw out any of those older hooks. Um, so it would be, these would benefit for sure from a little tiny engraving um, somewhere on the handle, but I realize the smaller you get with that hook, the harder it would probably be to do that. Uh, so I'm happy to just keep them in their original package, but would you just look at these? I absolutely love that rainbow wood. It is so pretty. They're smooth, they've got a beautiful little carved in detail down at the bottom, which, you know, if you're feeling your way through your work, you'll know you're kind of getting close to the bottom when you feel that, almost like, almost like <laughs> when you're driving and, you're, and you've been driving down a long road that has like no stop lights or stop signs and you're getting close to the end and to wake you up, the car goes brr, brr, because they've got the road kind of divoted. That's, <laughs> that's what this is. <laughs> Maybe that's to wake you up, I'm not sure. Um, nice little, very minor um, flattening in the middle for the thumb press or the thumb grip, um, the thumb deck as I call it. And depending on whether or not you are knife grip or pencil grip, I'm a, I'm a knife grip, that I don't feel like that's going to interfere with the comfort and the ability to spin your hook or just let it sit, um, however it is you hold that. So just, just the most sort of subtle of, of decks there, but it's nice. There's some, definitely something you can put your, your thumb up against. No visible seams, absolutely smooth all the way throughout. And these are inline. You can see that hook is inline. The back of the hook goes right up to the top. It doesn't taper like the Susan Bates hooks do. And I will just try to get these into a nice little shot for you so you can see them behind my hand there. So the Susan Bates hook tapers, so it bends, and the hook point is sort of like right in line with the center of the hook. And the inline hook has the straight back and it does not taper to the top. So that's how you can tell the difference between the two. Um, I use them both. I like them both, and I really feel it does depend on the yarn and the fiber that I'm using um, before I really see a difference in that tapered hook or that inline hook. But, ah, um, oh, I cannot wait to try these. Another thing I love about these rainbow wood hooks, look how deep the hook is on that. That is a nice deep grab. Um, that is a, a deep hooks are really helpful if you're working with bigger stitches. Maybe you want to have a whole bunch more loops on your hook. It, it kind of allows you to, um, or if you're using much thicker yarn or yarn that's got like a lot of ply, it allows you to really get in there and grab it. So you're not, I don't like shallow hooks very much because, because the, the loop or what you're trying to grab will sometimes just slip right off of it. But nothing is going to slip out of the grip of that hook. That is great. So they all seem to have that look to them. I'll put this one back. So that was the 6.5 millimeter. That was the biggest one. Let's pull out the littlest one. Oh, this is so cute. Oh my gosh, look how thin and dainty that is. I might have to, I might, I might have to create a little transitional um, grip if I'm going to use these for any expended, extended period of time because um, I do have uh, rheumatoid arthritis which can sometimes rear its ugly little head when I'm trying to crochet for long periods of time and I'm gripping a small hook. Usually you see me using my clovers which have a nice ergonomic um, grip to them uh, and I absolutely love those but um, there's just something comfortable about a tiny skinny little hook that takes me back to my early crochet days that I really like. I like too when you've got that long narrow shaft you can put a lot more work on it so the working part of your hook is longer when you don't have a grip on it so that's one of the benefits of having hooks that don't have grips. Um, you can even experiment with little Tunisian stitches, um, like if you want to sort of experiment with a Tunisian stitch pattern, you don't have to break out the big long hook for that, so you can get quite a number of loops sort of on one of those regular no-grip hooks. And um, 
if you're working big long stitches like trebles, double trebles, treble treble, triple trebles, those sorts of things where you're just wrapping yarn forever before you pick up a loop, um, that gives you plenty of working space up, up on the, the, the working end of that hook. So absolutely beautiful. Also has a very subtle but definitely available thumb deck. Comfortable, easy to spin. Nice deep hook. Look how skinny this hook is and how deep that, that grab is for that hook. Um, it's just um, wonderful. Uh, that's got those little divots at the end. I, I love that even just as a design feature, but I like the way that feels too. And that's the smallest. And the rest of them are all in between. Uh, I cannot wait to give these a try. Oop, I can hear you. You were the first one to get dropped on the floor. How do you like that? You have been baptized. <laughs> And a nice snap to close. That's a really nice snap finish. Um, that's a really good plastic case. It's not cheap. It's very substantial. It's not too wiggly or, or so I'll definitely keep them in this case with their little inserts. Um, I might even create like a little pretty case to keep the case in, if you know what I mean. Like a little, like a crochet pocket or something that I can slide these into just, you know, to kind of make it look a little nicer. I do like that it's see-through though, because it really shows off all that rainbow wood, because um, it really is pretty to look at. And they're all a little bit different. They've all got like, where, where the color kind of curls through the wood is a little bit different for all of them. Ah, oh, anyway, I really like these. I'm really looking forward to giving them a try. And those are all the hooks that we picked up at our Lens Mill haul. Um, so all together we paid, let's see, 69, almost $70 for the hooks all together. So the two Susan Bates and then the set of the Rainbow Woods. Um, and that would be, what am I looking at here? About mm, 7.48, maybe around 54, $55 American. So that's sort of the, the, the money, uh, What's that? What do you call that when you move the conversion? That's the, <laughs> that's the conversion, basically, between the Canadian and the U.S. Just so you've got kind of a, a, an idea in your head of what it costs for us. And I'm going to say that's probably a good price. Lens Mill is sort of a discount store. Um, usually the prices for its yarn, its fabric, and its tools and whatnot are better than the typical craft um, mega stores and usually certainly better than the average sort of like independently owned craft store. Understanding that independently craft, uh, independently owned craft stores have a higher overhead than these people who can buy in gigantic bulk. Um, so it, I feel like I got a pretty good deal on those hooks at Lens Mill. And if you have bought similar sets, if you've bought the Rainbow Woods, if you've bought those inline, um, I should say those Susan Bates crow hooks, uh, I would love to know in the comments down below what you paid for them. Uh, because I'm always curious to sort of see, as we all chime in from all four corners of the earth, uh, what we're paying for yarn and for hooks and what we consider a good deal to be. Uh, because I feel like it changes quite a bit from one place to the next. Anyway, we hope you enjoyed that little hook unboxing. A little bit of, uh, little bit of, of uh, crochet hook um, candy shopping. <laughs> That's what it feels like. It feels like unboxing new hooks feels a bit like candy shopping to me. I'll, I'm not going to eat them, obviously. I'm going to eat this guy here behind me. <laughs> but I'm really looking forward to giving them a try. And if I find there's anything odd about them, um, then I will certainly check back in with you a little later and let you know. But uh, definitely want to give that double-ended crochet hook um, a workout. I want to try some Tunisian in the round. I'm going to see what that feels like. And I definitely am looking forward to playing with my new Rainbow Woods. Um, they're so smooth, they feel so nice, and they just look so pretty when they're working. I find I get a little bit mesmerized by them. At least I certainly did with the one that I already had in my collection, so glad that I can fill out that collection. I might even display them with my yarn winder. Not sure. Might do a little redecorating here in the craft room. We shall see. Anyway, <laughs> we hope you guys have a wonderful week ahead, and thank you so much for hanging out with us today. We'll see you soon here on the Jade and Stitches show. Until then, stay safe, stay crafty, have a great day. Bye, guys! Hi everybody, Mr. and Stitches here. Thank you for watching today. Here are some of our other videos you might be interested in. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe.